What does it take to do water solo? Why would someone try to climb the height of a regular route but choose to not use a rope? Or should I ask, how big of a vision have you got to have in order to make this into a full-on climbing discipline? Deep water solo is no doubt one of the purest forms of climbing. It's literally just you climbing up a wall under your own steam. If you fall, you fall all the way down and you have to start all over again. This was first practiced by Mikel Riera in the late 70s and later developed by some other climbers like Tim Emmett, Neil Gresham or Clem Loscott, among others. <laughs> Nowadays it's fairly easy to jump on the deep water solo train as there's so much information out there and it's accessible to anyone. However, do you have to be a nutter to practice deep water solo? No. Or maybe I let you be the judge of that. For us, it was a no brainer to go to Cala Barques in Mallorca, a crack that is home to some of the best deep water soloing in the world. But what do you need? Deep water solo in terms of gear is quite simple. You only need a pair of climbing shoes and chalk, just as you do in bouldering. However, you can add onto this list and take a second pair of climbing shoes, spare chalk bag, a dry bag, as sometimes you have to swim in, and then you can get super fancy and hire a dinghy, a little boat, a yacht, or whatever your budget allows you to afford. Although by far, after a week climbing in Mallorca, the most important piece of climbing gear you'll need is a good pair of coho- <laughs> Deep water soloing is scary. Up to a certain degree, you have to be a bit of a nutter. Although we started off nice and easy and did some warm-up climbs, the first time I went on a route that I could potentially fall from, it felt different from any other climbing experience I've had. I can't help myself but to relate to Jakob Schubert's words in his Lasha video when he says, It's free soloing, but with like a very nice insurance. This first route called Hercules would have felt like a warm-up on a normal sport climbing day but the fact of it being a deep water solo route made me realize that I really didn't want to fall. So it felt like a type 2 fun experience. Kind of miserable when it's happening, but fun in retrospect. All right, oh, that was scary. My plan as to doing this rid was to jump off from the top of the cliff to definitely get the jitters out and confirm that it is actually fine to fall and then try some harder classics. However, when I went to the edge of the cliff and strapped my GoPro to my head, I just thought, actually, I'm not sure I can jump from here. And in the process of trying to build out the courage to actually jump from there, I saw my friend falling like a sack of potatoes. And believe it or not, that psyched me out. So there I was, not having done any practice falls, about to try bisexual. One of the most classic 7A deep water solo routes in the island and probably in the world. Unfortunately, there is no video of me doing bisexual. Just a few pictures my friend took of me. In any case, trying this route having not yet fallen off was rather an intense experience. It kicks off on a ledge, already halfway up the cliff, so 
so when you start climbing the feeling of exposure is sudden. Luckily all the holes are very big and the route is rather short. You could almost call it a boulder problem. After climbing bisexual I had a very quick play at Bandito, which is a 7C route that starts on the opposite side of the cape, but on this one I fell off straight away. In a way I felt relieved. I knew it wasn't a very high fall, but at least I had had a taste for it. I didn't try this route again as I thought that it would take some work, and instead we moved on to the cover area, where a big XXL was next up. This is a three star king line that climbs on amazing stalactites across the reef. The approach to it though was rather tricky, as you have to climb onto a shelf first on the top of this block. However, from here you can see pretty much the whole route. Big XXL goes at 7A and it's slow, steep and juggy, which seemed very promising as I can generally enjoy routes at this grade. So without further ado, I cracked on and started climbing. I think my nerves in this one were a bit more under control, despite the route topping out at 14 meters, as I had been able to see most of the holes from the start and the end looked rather easy. I would say that in general you do have to have a good aerobic base to try the water solo routes, as when the fear kicks in you do get pumped quicker. So being able to actually recover when you get to a good rest is fundamental. You can, up to a certain point, use good climbing fitness to override fear. I say this having tried routes below where I perceive to be my limit. I would assume that it comes down to experience the water soloing to be able to try limit routes being focused on the climbing alone and not being affected by any sort of psychological limitation. I will talk a bit more in depth about this on one of the coming videos, where I get stuck on a deep water solar route not knowing how to get up but neither wanting to drop off. Please do let me know if you are interested in an uncut video of the climbs. If I get a few people interested I will upload the whole climbs onto the Just Sense playlist. Stay tuned as I will be publishing another Mallorca video from my trip next Sunday at 5. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to support my channel. See you guys soon.